Hello, I'm Penny Thornton and welcome to my astrological take on the week ahead. Well, actually not just the week ahead, it's a little bit more. Um, although I will be starting with some of the essential details of what's happening in the se next seven days. What I began on my last video was to have a look at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which is exact, or we're looking at that pinpoint date of the 12th, 13th of January, and we're getting very, very near that point. And it's a good idea to have a broad look at what it may mean for all of us. Now, in fact, last week I looked at a little bit of history. I looked at uh, Prince William, uh, the Duchess of Cambridge, who both have the Saturn-Pluto conjunction of 1982 in their charts. And I explored the idea that with the repeat of this conjunction this year, 2020, it's going to be a mightily important year. There is going to be a lot of changes for them. We might even think of them as destiny being fulfilled, if you like, uh, but certainly a very powerful year. And um, I also look back at uh, the year 1517, when Saturn and Pluto were again in conjunction in Capricorn. And it was at that point that Martin Luther uh, put uh, his uh, 95 theses together and in so doing created political and religious reform, the Reformation. And that really, really applies to the way I look at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. So, Last week, we looked at that in general terms. This week, I'm going to take you through it, sign by sign, what the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is about, what the process is, what the challenges are that you're facing. And when it comes to my third video, um, centered on the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, we'll again look at the times we live in now and explore the potential for the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in 2020. So next week, um, which of course New Year comes in, is a very Jupiterian week. If Christmas week we had uh, the Sun conjunct Jupiter, in fact a solar eclipse conjunct Jupiter, this week we have Mercury conjunct Jupiter, which is the epitome of good news. We have Mercury, the principle of communication, Jupiter, the principle of expansion, and we get like expanded news. <laughs> Good news. Um, and what came to mind um, almost as I was preparing this video for you was the fact that the New Year's Honours list came out in England. And um, these are kind of plaudits from the Queen uh, for those who've done great and good things in life and awarding sportsmen and show business people, artists, all the people in all walks of life who go above and beyond um, the norm, if you like. So they're given a, an award and that's a very Mercury Jupiter thing. But of course, as we go through next week, and by the time we get to the weekend, we will be only seven days away from the, uh, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And as each day gets nearer, uh, the Sunday, Monday of that period, the following week, the, um, the aura of that Saturn-Pluto conjunction is stronger and the events surrounding it will be more meaningful. And we'll draw our understanding of that Saturn-Pluto conjunction from the events of the time, both in our own individual lives, and of course, in the lives of nations, and uh, generally in events uh, out on the world stage. Now, I have already mentioned the idea of reformation or reformation, because that's my keyword principle for the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And when you think about um, the great political and religious changes that occurred in 1517, and of course the huge political uh, changes, uh, national, international changes, we saw in 2019, uh, because, of course, the Saturn-Pluto uh, conjunction became active, if you like, from about the end of January 2019, and it will remain active until the end of 2020, about the time that Saturn will go into Aquarius fully. 
Um, so it's a two year process and effectively we're just halfway through that. And as I've already mentioned, we've seen a lot of great changes uh, uh, in, in terms of constitutions and governments and prime ministers and leaders. We've already been seeing that going on in the world. We've also seen a huge amount of unrest. Think of India at the moment, which is extremely turbulent. Hong Kong, where there have been huge protests I think that Saturn-Pluto conjunction is a bit like an eruption. All sorts of things come erupting from deep down. And of course, in that, they change the landscape. So when we look at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction personally in our own lives, we're looking at altering our life landscape in some way. And I think if we look at it like that, we look at the process that change must happen. We absolutely can't remain the same. Um, you know, we grow as human beings, quite literally, from babies up to adulthood. And of course, our consciousness expands and grows with our experience of life and the things that we learn along the way. And Saturn and Pluto, these two very difficult planets, they don't bring easy experiences, but who learnt or developed or evolved through fun times. Nobody. That isn't the way. We grow, we evolve through the challenges that we meet in life. And that's what Saturn and Pluto do most of all. They represent or they present us with not superhuman challenges, but with challenges that really stretch us on all levels. So let me take it side by side for a minute. Aries, Libra, Cancer and Capricorn are really in the front line of this Saturn-Pluto conjunction. These are the four angular signs, if you like, and uh, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which is in Capricorn, affects these four signs most of all in the most kind of intense way. Now, for Aries, when we look at that Saturn-Pluto conjunction from your solar chart, we see it taking place in the 10th house of career and life direction. And all Aries are ambitious. All Arians want to be someone, to get somewhere in life, to have achievements. And that area of the chart is where you're headed when it comes to life goals and achievements. It can mean your career, if you are career oriented. But I think if we just keep it general and we look at who you want to be and where you want to go in life, that will probably fit the bill. So Saturn and Pluto have presented you with a kind of boulder effect where you can go no further in a certain direction. It's absolutely blocked to you. There's, there's nothing more. And of course, when it comes to aims and ambitions and goals, personal and professional, if a job goes or a route is no longer open to us for whatever reason that may have happened, we have to dig deep into our resources to find out new ways of uh, moving forward, of finding who we want to be in a new direction. We have to almost reinvent ourselves because that pathway that we used to think we were on is no longer available to us. So it has been a very dispiriting year, 2019, for a lot of Aryans who feel they've been um, unfairly treated by fate, if you like. They've lost things they have steered towards and it's been very uncomfortable to try to reframe their um, objectives and who they are really on the, uh, 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 in, in terms of their status. Now, of course, 2020 will continue with this process. So you need to think of perhaps this middle part of January as a kind of make or break point where perhaps some of the things you've already altered and changed come up to review and then they're either changed again or you set off on this new trajectory. Now, if we move to the second sign of the zodiac, Taurus, this uh, Taurus and Gemini in this first quadrant of the zodiac, they are less kind of, um, they, they feel less compulsive kind of change. And I'm not kind of undermining your experience if you found it very tough, but it's those four cardinal signs that have had it uh, most intense of all. So with Taurus, we're in the ninth house. That's where Saturn and Pluto are currently together. 
And we look at the ninth house and we call it far horizons. We look at things that take us out into the world in a great wide perspective. So it can mean quite literally travel and places and people abroad and international events. But it can also mean things to do with widening our experience and knowledge. So we're looking at education. We are looking at uh, publication in uh, some cases. So Saturn and Pluto have already made their mark here. Perhaps it's involved your moving to a new country or a place distant from where you were, or maybe it's meant your plans to have your life on a wider platform, so to speak, in a different place, have come to naught because those plans couldn't go forward and you've had to rethink them and rechange them. Or that is the process that you're going to be going through in 2020. We also think about education publication, cultural beliefs, uh, the things that take us into the wider world. And these are changing too. And maybe if you are, for instance, in publishing, maybe you, are, you have a website or maybe you're writing a book or maybe you're blogging or whatever else you may be doing, maybe it's been particularly hard to find a platform for that, or you've received a lot of intense criticism and maybe had things blocked or stopped. That's the Saturn-Pluto process. They're bringing you back to reframe, to rethink, to reform your ideas. We come to Gemini and we're in the eighth house. That's a very mysterious zone, the eighth house. We call it the zone of shared resources. And it, it sounds a little lame, doesn't it? But shared resources are about finances, um, emotional and sexual exchange. They're rather important areas of life. It's where other people come into our sphere. So it can be the financial relationships we have with institutions, uh, with banks, with lending institutions. In business, it can be who we partner with in terms of finance. And of course, with things like marriages or living together with other people, we share finances. So what's happened here is there's been a restructuring and there have been some perhaps major gains, but also some major losses. And certainly if you've been in a business or with a company and that, uh, that connection has come to an end, there's had to be some uh, financial adjustments, whether that means there have been settlements to be made, uh, agreements to come to with who has what, divvying up the spoil, so to speak. And it's always difficult, that whole area of giving up your share of uh, money. Uh, and it's you know, the, the process of that can be quite fearful because you fear you will lose and what will life be like in the wake of it. And maybe too, in emotional and sexual exchanges, there's that, there's that idea of having maybe lost a lot through giving so much to another person or sharing on that level. But the thing is that we have to face our fears, Gemini, whether they're fears of uh, being penniless or whether they're fears of perhaps making ourselves so vulnerable to another person. And of course that ultimately is enriching. So that Saturn-Pluto process is ultimately enriching, but through perhaps a, a set of losses or at least a, a painful sharing experience. Now we come along to Cancer, one of the four cardinal signs, and we look at the area of relationships because this is where Saturn and Pluto have been moving through um, since uh, the end of January last year and through until the end of December 2020. So there have been a lot of cha challenges here. I mean, because of the karmic element to a Saturn-Pluto conjunction, people coming into your life have a strongly karmic aura about them, you may feel you've known them before, or that they bring a set of experiences that seems karmic in essence. And of course, there have been losses and breakups and difficult experiences with other people, whether again, in business or in professional life, or whether it's been fairly and squarely in terms of romance and marriage. But again, a little bit like all the Saturn-Pluto experiences, we have to drop the fear. 
because once you've lost everything or you've lost what you thought was really the most important thing in your life and you find you're still standing, then you can go forward. And that has been the major lesson to be learned, to be undergone in terms of finding strength in yourself while also needing that other person or those other people in your life, but not being so dependent on them that your whole identity is wrapped up in their being in your life. So you've had to learn to stand alone and maybe that process continues through 2020. Now we come to Leo and we look at the sixth house. Now, when you're learning astrology, you're told the sixth house is about work and health. And in a funny kind of way, you can look at that house and think, oh yeah, that tells me about my working conditions and how healthy I am. But actually that house is a lot more than work and health. It can be summed up neatly in one word, systems. Because all our lives have systems. We have a routine round. We have a lifestyle that consists of a series of systems. When we think about our health system, all these things are fundamental to life running as it should. So you can imagine when Saturn and Pluto get in there, something affects the system, the health system sometimes. Maybe you have a period of ill health or struggle with an injury. You may have uh, difficulties perhaps in terms of your work, in that maybe the work situation is not what it should be, or have difficulty working with colleagues, or maybe you lost uh, income or jobs because the company itself or the people you work through or with happen to have had circumstances beyond their control affect your working conditions. But this also is a house of service, of dedication, and when I think about the Leo nature, you are a sign that likes to be in control, in charge, in charge. You feel comfortable when you're in charge. And of course, what happens with Saturn and Pluto is that you're no longer in charge. But it is finding your sense of self in the fact that you may not be in charge and learning sometimes to devote yourself to the service whether that's the service of work, the service of others, or whatever else it may be, and still feeling as though you have not lost your sense of self within that. And whatever Saturn and Pluto take away, whatever is eliminated by Pluto and how far beyond you cannot go from Saturn, once that process is co completed and you yourself have dropped the fear about not having control, everything opens up and frees, and then there is big and beautiful change in the wake. And now we come to Libra, again, one of the four cardinal signs. And Saturn and Pluto have been in the fourth house. Now, we call this the area of home and family. And yes, it is. We learn a lot about family life and the home we live in, the background, the childhood we've come from, and the home we create, and the family we have as we become adults. But it's more than that. It's about the roots of life. It's where we've come from into the deep past of our ancestors. It's also the foundations of our future. So you imagine what mischief Saturn and Pluto get to in this area. They strip away some aspect of what we thought was unchanging and unchangeable. Maybe we've learned things about our family that we didn't know. Maybe we've been forced to find new levels or new resources in terms of, de of dealing with family experiences. Maybe quite literally the home itself, your four square walls have been subject to a Saturn Pluto transit. Maybe the foundations have started to slip and you've had to strengthen them. Maybe the roof has needed to be replaced or extensions provided, or maybe you've had to move home and make huge changes in your living accommodation. And of course, when we're separated from our home and our home itself is in a state of disruption, we feel unanchored, out of control in a way that we have nowhere strong and stable underneath us. So for Libra, Libra it's been trying to, it's, it's trying to deal with the replacement of what is eliminated and lost in terms of the ground beneath you, that your four square walls, your family who support you. And in fact, 
rebuilding relationships, rebuilding life itself from the bottom up. And that might also have included uh, relationships and also work. And I think in a funny kind of way, especially with the cardinal signs, that's Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, this Saturn-Pluto conjunction and why it's probably these four signs that have had the most challenges in front of them is because whatever area of life Saturn and Pluto may be forcing this process of reformation, it's affected everywhere. It, it hasn't left any area of your being or your life really untouched. Now we come on to Scorpio and Saturn and Pluto are in the third house of communications. So we think here, so what's Saturn and Pluto been doing in the third house? Have they been stopping you from travel? Have your journeys been monumental in their difficulty? Have you found it very difficult for, to get from A to B, both in terms of distance and travel and separations from people and work and whatever else it may be? And has it been difficult to get your plans launched? Because getting something from its uh, idea stage into something, you know, getting near to reality has been a struggle and a half. Maybe you can relate to that. But I tell you what I relate to more about this Saturn-Pluto conjunction in the area of the third house. It's about finding your voice, being heard. And I think that for Scorpio, it has been a struggle and may continue to be a struggle to be heard. Now, of course, that may be for all sorts of reasons. Maybe you've had a run after run of laryngitis. So it's literal. You can't get your voice out. Or maybe it's because you too, like your opposite number, Taurus, have been trying to get published or trying to get your words and ideas out there via the web or via all those different routes. We air our ideas and finding yourself blocked. Maybe in some cases you've been living in areas where there's been no broadband or that there's been incredible struggles with trying to get onto the information highway. You see how Saturn and Pluto will present you with challenges that are very real in the real world. But the process what they're really getting at is getting your voice heard, getting your message out there. So Saturn and Pluto may be making it difficult for you. But my goodness, what you'll go through, what you will learn, what you'll dig up through deep down and how you get heard, how you get your message out there will prove powerful and lasting. And again, it's a two year process. And maybe too in this third house, you learn quite literally and you've had to take exams and there's been a lot of struggle and time to learn something, to acquire new skills. And that too is something that goes on in these two years, expanding your skill set, acquiring things that you didn't have before, but you need now. So now we come to uh, Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is a sign that's deeply philosophical and always optimistic. But my goodness, have Saturn and Pluto got in the way of all that optimism? Yes, certainly. And the reason is they're in the second house of self-worth. So they have been in a process of slow transformation of your income, how you earn your money, and maybe for some Sagittarians, it's been a case of incredible hard work to earn a crust. Or maybe it's been difficult to get the money you deserve for what you do. You're doing it, but people aren't paying you enough. And they're not, and all the effort that you put into it seems to be going to naught. It's just a case of one financial setback after another. But of course, Self-worth isn't just about money. It's about who you are as a person. So while for some Sagittarians, money has not been a problem, and maybe in some cases you've made good money and received money from sources you didn't expect, because like your opposite number, the Geminis, there have been inheritances or redundancy settlements or things like that that have occurred on Saturn Pluto's watch. But yet it's created trouble and struggle, maybe through envy, and maybe because you yourself didn't think you deserved 
that kind of money. But let's take money out of the equation and look really at who you are as a person. If people don't value you and your gifts that you bring to the table as a person in a relationship or however else you may acquire your self-value, it's very, very dispiriting. So it's been a case of really, I think, bumping up your sense of self-worth, uh, even in incredibly diminishing circumstances. It's a process that's ongoing. And if people don't value you, never mind. It's how much value you place in yourself. And that's what Saturn and Pluto are teaching you. Now, I also want to come to Virgo now. Virgo, Saturn and Pluto for you have been in the fifth house of creativity, but it's not just creativity, it's pro-creativity. So you think about the boulders and the obstructions that Saturn and Pluto have placed in your path. Getting a creative endeavor out, done, has been a Herculean struggle. And maybe you've got nowhere. Maybe you've had to abandon it. And maybe you've had to go back to the drawing board to create a new plan, all purposeful because the final result will be what it should be. But it's hard work. It's hard work having to, you know, receive criticism and then having to go back and start again. It's a very hard process. But this is also an area uh, a little bit like Sagittarius and, and self-worth in that it's your creative spark, your sense of self. The signature you place on things so that you say, this is me. So it is the me zone of the chart. And if you're not appreciated for who you are and your creative offerings, that's very crushing and very hard. And when we think about Virgo, who is largely a beside the scenes kind of sign, you don't crave the spotlight. But my goodness, you like to be acknowledged for what you do. And I think it's been the acknowledgement that's been hard and may continue to be so during 2020. But that picture I gave you of going back to the drawing board, because what has happened has been rejected, not worked. You had to go back. The final result will be something better than ever. But procreativity is in there as well. And how many Virgos has, have struggled to get pregnant? Or how many grandparents or future grandparents have seen their offspring struggle with getting pregnant? And of course, that's bringing into the world very much part of yourself, isn't it? So that's perhaps the most graphic way we look at how difficult Saturn and Pluto have made it. But eventually that struggle will pay off. And sometimes it's a case of the struggles our children go through. I mean, they say you're only as happy as your unhappiest child. And I think if you're a Virgo and you've got Saturn and Pluto in the fifth house, then you're seeing your children who you love struggle and you can't take their struggle on your shoulders, although you do emotionally. But again, Saturn and Pluto eventually reform the territory. You'll end up with something very different. But that will be good, and it will carry you through the years ahead. So now we come to Capricorn, another and one of the cardinal signs, but also the sign in which the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is taking place. So I think of all the signs, for you, it has been the most challenging. Saturn is your ruling planet, and sometimes, of course, we acquire gravitas and dignity through a Saturn transit of our very own sign. And it can be a time of great achievement. And I know for many Capricorns it has, but it's come with a cost. Something has had to go in the process. So even those Capricorns who've made it and who've achieved a lot of the things that they set themselves out to do in life, the cost of that has been huge. And of course, this is a process that goes on through 2020 as well. But let's also look at those Capricorns who feel they've come up against a brick wall, who have experienced a lot of limited uh, uh, situations in which they've not been able to exert their power. Because power is important that we feel we are empowered in our own lives. 
And Saturn and Pluto have made it very difficult for us, if you're a Capricorn, to feel empowered. But there is a way to do this, and it is about not exactly devotion, which we found with Leo in the sixth house, but it is about getting on with the job. It's about doing the work of whatever has to be done, the work of, so to speak. And of course, Pluto has eliminated things, ways of life, relationships, jobs, you name it. A lot of Capricorns have faced things just being lost and abandoned. You had to go back to scratch and start again. That is also a very Plutonic thing, that idea of the phoenix rising out of the ashes of situations. A very powerful process, but ultimately absolutely worthwhile. Now we come to Aquarius, and it's very in interesting for Aquarius because the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is in the 12th house, that mysterious area of the unconscious mind. So a lot of things are in preparation for you. And I wonder if a lot of Aquarians feel they've been witnesses to other people's misfortunes and trials and tribulations. Maybe you felt a little powerless because you haven't been able to help those people who are struggling or dealing with circumstances not of their own making. You've been a witness to their struggles. But in a funny kind of way, that's also practice and preparation for you to take out onto a wider and maybe even a more personal scale when Saturn goes through the sign of Aquarius, which it will do fully from December next year. And of course, Pluto will also start to work its way through Aquarius in a couple of years time as well. So a lot of the things that you're working on and building, the ideas that are coming to you, the sense of perhaps being a little out of um, the center of things, but it's all a rehearsal, it's all a preparation on a very long-term basis. So maybe you feel you are cut off from life, you're a bit of a hermit from time to time, or maybe you feel that other people haven't recognized or brought you into their community, so to speak, and you've been a little stuck out on the side. But whatever loneliness, whatever sense of the hermit that you've acquired, whether through work, whether through life itself, whether in a relationship, that process is all going to reveal itself over the years to come. Now we come to Pisces, the very last sign of the zodiac. And for Pisces, this Saturn-Pluto conjunction has been in the 11th house. And I think this is an area of collaboration. It's also an area of aspirations too. And in a way, when we think about the 10th house, which is where I'm going in, on, in life, who I want to be, the 11th house says to us, well, that's all very well, who I want to be and where I'm going in life. But if I'm not fulfilled, if it's not really doing it for me, what am I bothering about it for? So in that sense, the 11th house has a lot to do with reforming your uh, sense of fulfillment about what you do in life or what your life means. And it has also had a process going on in terms of the communities that you work with, whether those are the sense of teamwork in a company where you work, whether it's social, working together as a team with other people. And Saturn and Pluto have pro pro provided very tough lessons with other people. Maybe you've become the shadow of a group. Maybe you feel you were always the one dumped on and that somehow you've taken the blame or the finger has been pointed at you. Whereas you think, hey, aren't we a group? Don't we take this on the chin as a group? Somehow for you, that sense of being the shadow of a group of people has been the struggle for you that you found very difficult to get over. But in a way, sometimes it's good to learn a little bit like we've gone through with uh, Leo and uh, finding that sense of uh, not being in control, but still finding a way of working within that and not losing one's dignity. And the same really, I think, with the 12th house, with uh, Aquarius, is that sense of still finding your sense of self. With Virgo, still finding the me part in all of the things that are proving challenging, often challenges raised by other people 
in life or in Pisces case, the people that you're having to work with or having to live with in a community or in your social group or your peer setting. So maybe your peers have not at all times respected you. Maybe it's finding your sense of your creativity and who you are, even with a critical un or disapproving audience, you have really had to find what matters to you and to reboot that sense of your creativity in a larger setting. So I think as you can see, if we, as we've gone through these 12 signs of the zodiac and where that Saturn-Pluto conjunction has come, just what a challenge it is, but a workable challenge and in many ways a rewarding one at the end of it. I think I have called Saturn and Pluto, this conjunction, a necessary evil. We need to have the struggle and the experiences that are presented to us with no sense of wanting them to happen in order to know how to work with them and to make something out of them. And effectively, that's what Saturn and Pluto are doing on a larger scale in terms of the world events and the global change that we're seeing quite physically in terms of the globe changing its landscape and in political, religious, national, international events. Now I'd like to end really with the positive side as I always do, I don't like ending on a, on a dull note. And what I think about Saturn and Pluto, and let's take this out onto the world stage for a minute, is that I think we grow through um, a struggle and you'll see with um, great uh, incidents where tragedies occur, how the communities, how the world sometimes as a community comes together to help and the sacrifices and the heroic uh, uh, acts that accompany sometimes disasters or great difficulties really raises the human spirit and this is why I also think Saturn and Pluto are a necessary evil, because it is through those struggles that we find our humanity, we find our human spirit, and in finding that human spirit, we come together. And that may be the biggest lesson of all they bring. So next time I look at Saturn and Pluto, we'll go a little bit further forward into 2020 itself and look at perhaps some of the areas of life that we can expect this great reformation. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you again, same time, same place, next week. Take care.